much rage. That you kept contain it. Marvel is back and bringing a dose of diversity with its newest series, Echo. We're taking you behind the scenes of how the series came to be. And the sci-fi thriller that was so timely, it was questioned if it should even make it to theaters. There was a moment, a very real moment, in a conversation that I had with Mickey Liddell of LD, where he was like, can we even put this out? Find out what nearly derailed production of ISS. Welcome to Equal Entertainment. I'm your host, Tracy E. Gilchrist, VP and Executive Producer of Entertainment for The Advocate. We're kicking off this episode by going inside the origin story of deaf and indigenous character Maya Lopez in the new Marvel series, Echo. I sat down with director Sidney Freeland to learn more about the importance of authentic representation and visibility on the screen. Maya is carrying a lot with her uh, through this series. And I wonder, would you touch on the role of guilt and grief in mm. her uh, in kind of her makeup, frankly. Oh, that's a great, that's a great, uh, great question. One of the very interesting things for myself is in, in this in this um, uh, series, and it has a lot of parallels in, you know, just Native American history in general, is this uh, idea of trauma, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and what trauma does to people, um, how we're affected by it, how it affects others, how we cope with it. And so really for, for us, um, you know, we wanted to uh, explore, uh, um, uh, you know how people how people adapt and cope with with uh, traumatic events, and and we through this we get to explore this whole uh, we get this explore a wide variety of um, uh, people and characters and how they're sort of um, uh, how it defines them, but also how they define others. I think this is really kind of groundbreaking that there's you know an indigenous actor with a disability, and would you talk about what it means to you to have that visibility in the world? Yeah, uh, you know, I think, you know, for myself, it was an incredible honor and privilege. You know, I, I come from multiple marginalized communities myself, you know, yeah. and so, mm -hmm. you know, I think uh, on paper, you look at a character who is deaf, indigenous, and an amputee, yeah. and for myself, I, I say, like, what is the human story behind this? You know, mm -hmm. I think, um, and so I think for somebody like Alakwa Cox, like, she just, she just brought a charisma, um, a <clears> presence, <throat> and, and a, a a toughness and a grit, yeah. um, but also an, in, an, inten uh, an intense emotionality, uh, emotionality, I don't know if that's a word, but the intense yeah, emotional uh, aspect to, to the character and the story yeah. um, that we were able to build on. And again, I think I think for myself, just I try to put myself in her shoes and imagine what that must have been like for her. She's incredible. <laughs> I'm really kind of blown away by everything she carries with this series. Uh, I wanted to ask you about the, you, we talked about the matriarch matriarchal lineage, and there's this character, Tukla, whose gender presentation to me is really fascinating. Uh, she's kind of shut out of uh, the peacekeeping forces and forgetting what they're called, the light horsemen? Yes. 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 Uh, so she's shut out of that, kind of told that, you know, you're a woman, you have to protect. Um, but I, I just found her incredibly fascinating, you know, dressed in her uh, trousers and just, Anyway, I don't know if there's something there, but I, I thought that was really incredible. Would you talk about her character? Oh, that's a that's an excellent um, that's an excellent point. You know, I think in in crafting the um, uh, uh, Light Horseman storyline, which was the episode by the way was directed by Catherine McKenzie and shot by Nabil Nagorka, I think it's absolutely beautiful. One of my favorite in the entire series. Yeah, the 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 Tukwa storyline, you know revolved around a, 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 um, a group of indigenous um, uh, of an indigenous police force known as the Light Horsemen. And it's interesting because I think the circumstances of that were it was a traditionally male uh, um, uh, occupation. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the father character in that even says um, men are life takers and women are life givers. Yeah. But that's also, uh, I think for a lot of indigenous communities, a traditionally European uh, 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 point of view, and so it's it's sort of I would say it wasn't intentional to to portray that, but it actually um, that storyline was actually a, um, a perfect example of how uh, Native American societies and cultures had changed over the years and yeah. with with uh, European uh, contact. Yeah, wonderful. Uh, thank you for that. 
Uh, and then I just wanted to ask you about shooting some of these incredible action sequences. It's a yeah. little bit different from uh, indie uh, <laughs> film like Drunk Town's Finest. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, I think the you know the the uh, it was it was a tremendous amount of fun to shoot the action in this in this in this show. You know, I think um, in the first episode there's a we have a six minute um, uh, action sequence that's all one shot, yeah. and um, I think what. I think everything, so everything stems from story, right? Whether it's in any film like Drunk Town's Finest or it's a, you know, a, 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 a big platform television series like, like Echo, um, it's always got to come down to story. All five episodes of Echo are streaming now exclusively on Disney+. Plus. Now to the sci-fi thriller ISS, starring Ariana DeBose as a U.S. astronaut and scientist on the International Space Station. When a global conflict erupts on the ground, U.S. astronauts and Russian cosmonauts battle for control. I talked with DeBose and director Gabriella Cowperthwaite to learn how real-life events almost derailed the film. Gabriella, uh, this film is very uh, sadly prescient, and mm -hmm. you know there's this unity until political and historical factors dictate that there is not. Would you touch a little bit on the uh, horrific, you know, timeliness of everything. Yeah, so we were in post um, when we, when this thing seemed to happen, when, when Ukraine and, and Russia um, mm. situation happened. And so like, there was a moment, a very real moment in a conversation that I had with Mickey Liddell of LD, where he was like, can we even put this out, this movie out? You know what I mean? Like, what are we, it's just saying and all these things and it was sort of like for me i always think that right i mean just again that documentary side of me where it's like okay there's real people real subjects and real things that i've worked with before and like you don't mess around right with with fiction with that world and in this world it was sort of like there was a part of me that was like okay do we have the luxury we just have the luxury of these filmmakers to just be like simulating conflict you know what i mean and it was just sort of sometimes it sticks in my craw to be honest mm -hmm. That said, I was like, okay, but what have I wanted to say about this movie since the beginning? And that is real, the real toll when these decisions are made mm -hmm. on national levels or whatnot, about conflict, whatnot, the, the toll that's taken is, is little people, right? It's very human. And so really just the abstract notions of war or nationalism or whatever, we read about them in the news, just like conflict, war, whatever, but like, okay, but watch that translate into these six people in real time and see what that does to them, you know? And these people with their families and with homes and, you know, yeah. who actually love each other. Um, and so it's sort of like, my goal was to distill all of that into this very sort of pure, strange, you know, little orb yeah. and see what people do. And sort of like, um, I guess, did I answer any questions by it? No. Like, you know what I mean? It's just like, I don't even know if those questions are answerable right now. But um, I think you got us to ask bigger questions so about key. how we relate to each other. Yeah. And yeah. at least that's what this is what this script brought up for yeah. me and the act of doing the film and then seeing the finished product. I still was asking the same questions like uh, these American astronauts and these Russian cosmonauts, very different people from different cultures who have a reverence and respect for science and the cosmos, but they are this. And a thing happens, an extraordinary circumstance ensues, and they are forced to sort of choose. Mm -hmm. You know, is it love of country, or or can we look at each other as the human beings that we are? And that's a very real thing that we all do today. The humanity mm -hmm. that you experience, even within the intensity mm -hmm. and the claustrophobia, can lead you to ask yourself some bigger questions. That's exactly right. And that's a wrap for us on this episode of Equal Entertainment. I'm your host, Tracy E. Gilchrist. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.